feel very privileged to be able to be an artist. And I used to be uncomfortable. I spent a long time feeling like it was a very indulgent kind of or selfish way to live. And um, and I, you know, for a long time I wasn't really. I felt like I should be doing more. Like I should be doing something more meaningful with my life. And then I came to this realization that actually, you know, for me being an artist, um, it makes me. It just makes me such a complete person. My name is Jasmine Mansbridge and I am an artist, a painter really, but I also do, some, I'm starting to do some installation work and um, painting murals, so just extending my practice a little over the last couple of years. I live in Hamilton at the moment in Victoria. I've been here for about five years, a little more than five years, so I've spent a long time living in the Northern Territory before I moved here. This studio here we're talking in now, this is where I paint. Um, most, of the, most of the time and my family's here as well. I've got a, a big family so it, it works really well. This is actually is the old dining room in, in our house, in my home, my family home. So I have five children. The oldest one, she's 19 and she's you know, at uni most of the time. And the youngest is you know, 18 months old. So it's a, quite a dynamic family environment. The challenges to working from home though are, are that, that interruption of of a train of thought which I sometimes it, it takes me longer it's like takes me longer to collect my thoughts and and um, and work because of those interruptions so that's one reason I work at night is because that's when I have that you know in uninterrupted time to to do to do probably better work my style has evolved a little over time um, when I was younger, when I started painting, I started painting when I was 17, 18, and I was living in Catherine, and there were, a, I was helping in an Aboriginal art gallery, um, mixing paints and doing things, and I was very influenced by the preciseness of the Indigenous work, and you know, the time they spent doing their lines or their dots, depending on where they were from. And so, going, you know, in my own work, that, that visual, uh, Aspects always been really important to me, even though my styles change slightly. I am inspired by funny things like, um, you know, the sun falling on a building, uh, how a structure will look from different um, angles. So I might go and, uh, you know, stand at a, a different angle under a building and look up and see how that, you know, because the angles are always really important to me. Um, particularly in my work, there's a lot of angular stuff happening more and more. So those kind of visuals, visual inspiration, then that's usually combined with an idea, which is, you know, how would, how would, how could you paint love? Do you mean, and not do a love heart? Or um, those kind of ideas, how could you, how can you paint, how can you paint your child leaving home? without painting, you know, a child weeping at the airport. Um, those kind of things, they, I spend a lot of time thinking about, about those kind of things, how, you know, they can, those ideas that kind of can be represented in a non-traditional way. You know, one of the things I've really enjoyed doing over the last few years is just working on a larger scale. And um, so I, I started, um, you know, it's really hard to get someone to give you a wall to paint in the beginning. So I, I painted this, you know, painted our family garage <laughs> as an experiment. And it, I just, I mean, I just loved that working at that scale. And, you know, it did something to my work as well. When you, when you are blowing up your work, you're kind of changing the way, you know, you, you see your work in a way. You know, one thing led to another. And so, and so in this community where I, where I am now in Hamilton, I've, I've been given, I was given a great opportunity to paint the, the Roxburgh house. I'm at all the time, which is quite close to my house actually. So did their laneway for them. Um, so that's, you know, that was a, a really great piece that I really enjoyed doing, the, you know, for friends. The other one, the big one is the, the, I did a collaboration with another artist who paints a lot of bird life in a very traditional um, Way. So we, we painted the, NA, the back of the NAB bank in town and um, so we, that was a collaboration so the, the difference from that to my not usual work is the bird which is Roger's bird and then um, we you know, um, 
use a, a, a colour palette um, that was the same across both his work and mine. One other one I did was the Monave College. So I did a, a mural for the departing Year 12 class last year. So they had um, all the balloons which they let go to signify them all going off into the world at their graduation. So I painted 81 balloons for all of the students. That's in the, in the Monave basement. So um, that was a really that was a really nice project to do with the kids. When you're young, like there's just no, there's never any guarantees, and I think that's probably the hardest, um, probably one of the hardest parts about being an artist. If you're going to be a doctor, you know you're going to do your six years, and then you do this and that, and then you're a doctor. Whereas if you choose to have a creative path, there are no, like there are no guarantees um, at all. So I think probably, um, you know, I've been painting for almost 20 years, and that's, and when I think about that, that's a long time and a lot of work but I'm obviously very passionate about it. I'm just really happy to be doing what I'm doing and, um, and have got to this point after painting for so long and it's paying off. That's a, a really great feeling. I, I, I think maybe a lot of this you know, creative game is just sticking it out and just trying again and again. Um, you know, and that's, that's probably the only, maybe that is, how you can guarantee your success if you're a creative person is just not giving up.